Welcome to this bit video on the basics of DNA supercoiling. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to define, calculate, and diagram linking number, supercoiling, and relaxation of DNA. You should also be able to diagram how various shapes of DNA will travel through a gel. First, let's review some properties of B-form DNA. As you can see, DNA is a twisted ladder with two backbone strands that intertwine. It also has a rise of 10.5 base pairs per turn. This base state is referred to as relaxed DNA. So any linear forms of DNA, like the picture on the left, will maintain this rise of 10.5 base pairs per turn just through the energetics of the backbone interactions. The linking number is the number of times one strand wraps around the other. Shown on the left is not DNA, but just any two circles. If they interlink only once, the linking number would be one. And if they cross over each other six times, the linking number would be six. For any circular DNA, we can calculate the linking number by knowing how long the DNA circle is and our rise, which we just talked about, the 10.5 base pairs per turn. For our plasmid, P entry 4, we would calculate it as follows. We have 3,800 base pairs and 10.5 base pairs per turn. Gives us that the two backbone strands are linked approximately 362 times. It is important to note that this is not supercoiling. This would be a relaxed plasmid, even in the absence of supercoiling, because of the helix and the nature of B-form DNA, the DNA will already be interlinked 362 times. Supercoiling comes when we alter that base linking number. So shown in the middle is a relaxed plasmid, which would be the 362 links, and if we increased the number of times one strand went around the other, that would be called positive supercoiling. And if we decreased it, it would be called negative supercoiling. We'll review in the next slide, but it's important to note that because DNA really wants to keep that nice B-form structure, it will deform in three-dimensional space in order to maintain that base pairing and rise on a local level. So to review some supercoiling principles, to supercoil DNA, enzymes called topoisomerases use energy to change the linking number from the base number. So the base number that you calculate is always for relaxed DNA, and we need to use energy to break the covalent backbone, pass the other backbone through, and then put it back together. If we're, uh, if we're supercoiling, we're changing the linking number up or down, and then the reverse of that would be relaxation, where we go from a supercoiled state back to relaxed. And there are enzymes that do both. As I mentioned previously, an increase in the linkages of the two strands around each other is referred to as positive supercoiling, while a decrease in the number of linkages is called negative supercoiling. As we saw on the previous slide, both negative and positive supercoiling will cause the DNA to deform in three-dimensional space, and it'll link up, uh, curl up on each other, just like you saw in that picture. And if you go back and look, the negative and positive will actually um, have that three-dimensional writhe in two different directions because they're trying to compensate for the two different directions that their backbones have gone. Either way, though, they'll take up less space and move faster through a gel, which is our next principle. And then as far as um, plasmid DNA that you would purify out of a cell, all organisms store their DNA as negatively supercoiled, both their genomes and anything like a plasmid that they're maintaining. This is for two reasons. One, it decreases the amount of space that they need to store that DNA inside their cell. And two, the reason that they pick negatively and not positively, since both would decrease storage space, is because negatively supercoiled actually allows for easier opening 
of the helix for replication, transcription, etc., that uh, that need access to those base pairs. And finally, I want to talk about the DNA shape and how that affects migration through a gel. So DNA will run differently based on both size and shape. Here's an example on an acrylamide gel where in each of these cases, each DNA strand has the exact same number of nucleotides, but the fact that it's single-stranded versus double-stranded versus a holiday junction is going to cause it to move differently through a gel. For our pl prepared plasmid from the cells, the majority of that DNA is going to be supercoiled because as I mentioned, the cell stores all DNA as supercoiled, but there will also be some that one of the backbones gets nicked due to damage, either from the alkaline lysis, from the light, from pipetting. Any of these things can cause some damage to the backbone. And if both backbones aren't covalently attached all the way through, the supercoiling won't be maintained. And finally, uh, because of nicks occurring close to each other, and again, just damage to the DNA, we can get some linear product. And that will run true to size compared to the latter. Whereas the supercoiled runs faster, it's all bound up on itself, and the circular runs slower because it has to maintain that large shape. So hopefully this has given you a little more background as far as we calculate linking number, how that differs from supercoiling, and then the opposite of supercoiling would be relaxation, which is what happens if you have a nick in the backbone. And then finally, giving you more idea of how various shapes of DNA will impede progression through a gel.